My name is Aaron Schmidt. I'm with Insight Sellers in Copenhagen Commons in Copenhagen, Denmark. And I started brewing beer by drinking beer. How did you end up in Copenhagen brewing beer? Yeah, it's great so, wild ales. Uh, I moved to Denmark uh, in 2017 to start uh, Mikler Bauhelen with um, the Mikler Group. And what was your background like? I had a brewery in San Diego called Toolbox Brewing Company where we did very similar things. Uh, and I was brewing wild ales there. So um, it was, uh, I was approached by McKellar and asked to come to Denmark to do what I was doing already in California. And uh, what's the difference with your wild ales? I mean, they're so soft and subtle and really uh, sophisticated. I mean, uh, a lot of people try wild ales and uh, the acids just kill you out. Yeah, I mean, I believe in balance and uh, elegance, so we, of course, try to incorporate that in all the blends that we that we make, so it's just, it's, I guess, a, a matter of personal taste. Where do you, what's your output of wild ales from your brewery? Uh, in um, our first full year of operations, I think we'll, we'll probably be somewhere around 250 hectoliters. Sour beers, we know the Belgian heritage. How did you end up here in uh, the Brussels Beer Festival? Oh, um, well, you know, a lot of our beers are inspired big time by Belgian beer, but we, we of course, are able to build on our traditions and our passion and kind of turn into what we want. So I ended up here because I think People who have been Belgium have noticed it and they, they invited it. I, I mean, I got an invitation and I, I thought it sounded like a good opportunity. But quite and honestly, I don't know. It's not like um, there hasn't been an intent or a purpose on it. Yeah. And what's your uh, output currently in terms of hectoliters? And do you have a separate brewing installation for Mickler? Uh, we're, we're separate from Mickler 100%. Uh, I, uh, I took over the business uh, in May from Mickler, uh, and I think in our first full year of operations, we'll, we'll push about 250 hectoliters. Yeah. Well, what's your production per year now? Like, right now? Well, we're in our first year, so we're in our Oh, you're still in your <laughs> first year? Yeah, it was in May we started. That's what's so, so amazing. In yeah, our yeah. first year of operations, I think we'll probably hit about 200. Yeah. yeah. And uh, who do you have helping you, and how do you do your wild ales? What, what are you using that's keeping these so uh, soft and subtle? Well, so my team is very small. It's um, my colleague Antoine. Uh, he's French, and, and he does a, a lot of the blending, and, and well, he helps me with the, in the cellar a lot. And then um, on the administration side, we have my wife. And so it's a it's a th three person yeah. team. Um, and uh, why are our wild ales or the beers the way they are? I don't know. Like, I think it's it's just a matter of personal taste and preference, and that's just what we what we want. Um, and what's your future plan? Do you keep it the way it is right now, that's what you can handle, or do you hope to grow uh, much bigger? I don't want to be big. I was big before when I worked with Nicola. I, I want to be small and I want to make beer for the people who truly appreciate it and love it and are passionate about it. Um, we'll see where it goes. Maybe it'll take off, maybe it will stay small. Either way, if, if, if I can um, continue to make my living and, and, and with my, my, my passion of blending beers like this, then I'm completely happy. So. You're, you're getting your beer fermented somewhere else? or are you... No, we, we ferment it. We get the wort produced by other breweries in town, but then they send us the wort, the unfermented beer. And uh, we ferment and do everything else. So, do you use a cool ship method? Or yeah, we use cool ship sometimes. Our, all of our beers are blends of cool ship beers, or and or uh, beers that we use. Basically, the wild yeast that we pulled out of the cool ship fermentations and pitch. But none of them uh, implement uh, commercial yeast uh, for primary fermentation or maturation. And uh, what's your favorite? What can you describe your range? Because the you know, I found that, uh, what was it, the crimson was incredible, and uh, everything I've tasted from you is incredible. Yeah, crimson. It's like first shot out of the, 
out of the hole, as you say. <laughs> Crimson's been quite popular. I think really we're, we're yet to, to really show it because we're so young. We, ha we haven't even started packaging our, our, uh, our 2023 uh, fruit beers yet, but I think you can really see who, we're, who we really are when we start packaging our stone fruit beers. Um, from this harvest, so uh, peaches and apricots and the nectarines and these things. What's the, what's the uh, Copenhagen and the uh, Danish beer scene like now? Is it really open uh, or craft brewers thriving or did some fail during the COVID? I mean, you came in. Copenhagen has a really great craft beer scene. Of course, just like uh, in, in all the markets, there's been some some casualties during the, the coronavirus lockdowns um, but it's rebounding and, and we're, we're, we're seeing uh, kind of a kind of when a when a forest burns to the ground the, the regrowth afterwards because um, Malmo at one point was the uh, in the right country no Malmo is in Sweden Sweden yeah but and the Danish side was there is because Malmo you know in Sweden really started big, at least a little pocket of craft. Yeah, Did sweet. the same thing happen in Denmark, or is it so much yeah, more absolutely, spread out? Absolutely, is. The, the Nordics, especially Sweden and Denmark, uh, don't mean to exclude Norway by any means, but they have a good beer scene too, but they're, they're, it's bustling. Um, we're in a really interesting phase in the craft brewing industry as a whole, where I think we're seeing some transitions and some evolution uh, and so we'll just have to see where that goes do you foresee just staying it like that and developing these or do you see much more experimentation you mentioned other things that you want to do the business and the business in itself and, and our our production philosophy is experimental in general uh, we'll never stop doing that i i see that we probably will pick up our production a little bit uh, over the course of the next few years um, but for all intents and purposes, I, I think that we'll remain a small, small company with a, a very tightly knit and close team of myself, my, my, my colleague Antoine, my wife, uh, a few part-time employees that come and help us bottle and, and do some miscellaneous tasks. But That's a good, good life for, yeah, there's no dreams of empires. Or <laughs> No, I mean, I don't really need to take anything over. I'm happy with this. It's, it's great that people love what we're doing and are, are, are passionate about that and yeah. is just as much as we are. And, you know, if that, if that continues to grow, of course, maybe we'll continue to develop the business. But for now, so we're I grateful can, for what we have. Yeah, we can see you can probably, from what I'm talking about, people become one of the next cult peers, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll see where it goes, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, we're, we're young, so new is exciting. So. Let's see what the sustainability is like uh, in, in the long run. But um, if, if we can continue to produce the beers in the same caliber we're producing them now, I, I have no doubt that we'll, uh, we're on the right track. Yeah. Great and lovely talking. Thanks Thank for talking to the Beer Idiots. Thanks for having me on your, uh, your show. Excellent. Thank you so much. Cheers.